Guys, it's not a house. What the heck is this? <laughs> oh, these videos. I'm gonna try and find a way. I'm gonna try and find a way to get a bit closer. Welcome back to the channel. It's 2024 and it's about 20 past 7 in the morning and we're going to start the year with an exploring video. The right way to start the year in my eyes. So I'm heading to Arbor Train Station and I'm heading back to Mercer Tidville and for everyone who has liked to support the Mercer Rising documentary, thank you very much. So, while we head to Arbor, let's have a look at the history of Merthyr Tydfil. Merthyr Tydfil was one of Wales' biggest industrial hubs, being a community heavy in the iron industry. As seen in my Merthyr Rising documentary, the town was built to be the heart of the South Wales Valleys. Many infrastructures, such as cinemas, shops and churches, sprung up across Merthyr. With the fall of the iron and steel industry, a lot of these places were quickly closed down and left abandoned. Today's video I will be exploring the abandoned history of Mercer, from hospitals to ironworks and synagogues. Well, I'm here now in Merthyr Tidfil, and before we head to the first location, which is Anisbach Ironworks, or the end of Remains, when I was on the train you saw on the side of the mountain these little white blobs it looks like from the footage. That is the graves from the Aberfan disaster. Obviously I made a documentary in Aberfan, but it was a landslide that killed hundreds of children, it was bad weather and it caused a coal slurry to slide down the mountain and hundreds of children died as a result of it. So let's head now to Ansbach. So Ansbach engine house is just over there, I can see it in fairness. But um, this is a little bit of the history of Ernestbach engine house. It um, was open part of the Kavath Ironworks as like a substitute. But with Kavath being so successful, Richard Crawford wanted to expand his business. He already owned the Tim Works in the forest. He wanted to own this um, other um, ironworks. So Ernestbach was opened. And with it being smaller ironworks, it didn't garner that much success compared to Kavatha. So we we'll head there now. Let's have a look for it. Here we are at what is remaining of the Anisbach Ironworks and where it's pretty cool I did not know it was there but I can't get down to it is what's left of the kilns where we would be the calcium at the line that is what's left with this it's a glorious engine now so let's have a let's take a closer look of it welcome to Anisbach engine house this building formerly housed a huge steam powered engine the pumped hot blasts of air into the iron making furnaces behind the oh what they furnaces actually then so then but they are blast furnaces in fairness so if you can't go in there it is closed i think it is open like only a couple of times a year but i wonder what's down here 
What if we could see more? Oh yeah. Let's take a look. Go, oh, let's, let's have a look right by here now. So I am walking down the side of the end, you know. A lot of it is boarded up, but you can see by here on this wall, this wall up here, it looks like the old remains of the blast furnace. Some discarded shoes. You can see, it's, like I said, it's all boarded up. Let's see what's behind you now. That's, that's quite interesting, but they are a little opening. You can see by there. Maybe that's what's going to do with the blast furnaces. But yeah. I think this just ultimately takes you down towards the blast furnaces, but... This has got a very interesting history, this little engine house. You wouldn't think this ironworks would be full of history, but... Yeah, we can't get to the blast furnaces. So we head back up to the engine house. This engine house by here has had a dark past. A lot of people passed away in here in quite weird circumstances. One case is basically two miners that wanted to get out of the cold, they were drunk and they decided to sleep in a in near the turbines which obviously they died of uh, suffocation of carbon monoxide gas and another one which is really tragic a serious murder occurred here in 1908 there's a woman called Mary Ann Reese she came here to visit a young lover of hers William Foy at the coke ovens and no one knows what happened, but Mary Ann Reese was found dead with a broken neck after falling into the drop within the within there, in fairness. William Foy was later executed for the murder and it is believed that these this engine house by her is haunted by the ghost of Mary Ann Reese and she is known as the White Lady of Anisfach. So now that's it here done at Anisfach closest one to the train station where I just got off so we're gonna head back into town and see where to go next the last half we saw was of the Matrix man and he was a British boxer he was a British champion boxer and he sadly passed away in the 1980s following a fight in America. I think his course death was down to complications from the fight. But this is like Mercer's history other than the Iron Age was boxing. So now I'm back in the town centre. Let's head to the synagogue in Thomastown, which was one of the most random finds. So let's head there. Well, all the way up to the synagogue, which is only literally up the road by there, this abandoned beauty of a church, which looked like it had a pub attached to it, because it has got the Six Nations sites almost printed by it, but that's an incredible find for basically by accident. So let's take a look, because that's the synagogue right at the end of the road. So let's take a look. Hotel, but just a 
abandoned and outgrown. I didn't know this was a part of it, a part of this video. This is another extra layer where we walk up speed to the synagogue, which is our next stop. So this is a little bit of history of the synagogue. Here we are, this is the old synagogue of Merthyr, which fun thing was doing research for this place was that I didn't know that Merthyr had a Jewish community so early on in its history. Let's take a closer look at it. So it's all boarded up. It is getting done out. We could try and go close as possible to it though. It is getting done out by the local Jewish group to reopen as a museum. But Mrs. history is so packed you can see how big it is that the Jewish community came here to work and wanted to open a synagogue on this road. By the look of it, is the architecture is very pre-Victorian. Almost, if you can see by the brickwork, almost great for its time. At the moment, it is left abandoned. You can see it's built right on top of the hill to be to basically be seen from the town centre, which is just down the road. Let's take a look around the back. But I'll take a look up here now. See if there's any like little snippets of architecture you can see it's a very tall building with very old fashioned pipes I'm not a big fan of these steps I'm probably going to only go so far up but this is what it looks like from the side a lot of windows bricked up windows yeah that's the synagogue I do have something else to show you quickly before I head back into the town centre just God help me make it down these steps alive. So now I'm walking away from the synagogue and I'm going down Union Street with this to so my right right here. And there's a little bit of a shell of an abandoned house I want to show you. Again, this is not a part of the video, it's like a church down the road. Um, after I show you this, I'm going to get breakfast, charge up this camera, so I'm using it right now, and carry on. Some um, big things to show you. I've got three more things. Very potentially on the squeeze and fall. We're gonna have a first time with you. Down Union Street we go. Well this house does look like it's been burnt out more than anything. But you can see by the roof supports and all the ceiling slats it is burnt out. Looks like a big fire has happened here. But we have to see if we can get to it, get into it, or too close to it. Because I do want to try and get into some of these places as well, present the history. But I think I might need to go up here, up this lane to get to it and have a look. We'll soon see. We'll get it. Guys, it's not a house. What the heck is this? <laughs> oh, these videos. I'm going to try and find a way. I'm trying to find a way to get a bit closer. Oh my god, these always take unexpected turns, but what a turn this is. It looks like a school. It looks like a hospital. It looks like an asylum. God knows what it is. Let's find out. Why when I research this, none of this comes up? Look at it. What is this? It looks like a hospital. It looks like an asylum. It looks like a school. I, I don't know, but... I'm thinking for the school, it's not always like a big yard. But I'm hoping to find a local on the way to try and get into it. And they can tell me what it is, because once I've done my research about this place, it didn't come up with what it was. So I'm hoping I can find a route in my head to go and ask. It's not a good sign, I need to go down, but we'll soon see. God, look at it. So I've just spoken to a local now. I did manage to find one on this path. And apparently this used to be St. Tidville's Hospital, which was a psychiatric hospital. I 
still trying to find my own way through it. Um, not gonna lie, it is exciting when you find things you weren't planning to find. So, let's try and find a way in. I think we can see um, another path a way in, but let's just see if it's viable. I am pretty much at Thomastown Park anyway. But, hold fire, we'll get there. Sadly, I can't get any closer than I have this. But, it is a welcome find, I'm not gonna lie. It's a very welcome find. Okay. Maybe. We'll go have a look, but maybe there's a chance. If not, I need to charge up my camera and then probably go what's the next place the YMCA so let's have a look if we can you can see the back of it there let's see there's an actual fucking gap we're there we're there and it looks like you can get into so let's have a look and I mean look at that wow look at that Guys, welcome to St. Tidville's Hospital. One of the greatest unexpected finds. We could have a look in here, actually. We could fly. I've got a drone now. We can fly the drone over this. Let's have a look what it says by here. This is the way out. I don't know if this is actually part of the hospital. But look at this, it used to be a psychiatric hospital at one point. Let's go and pop our heads into this window. Clearly this would be the main courtyard. You see a very old gate. Everything is boarded off. In most of they are pretty good keeping abandoned things abandoned and safe. It's the building I saw, so it was a house, but that's got an entry. But look at it actually insane. How did this not come up when I was doing research? So we're going to head in here instead. Be careful. Wow, it looks nice these stairs. I can't go so far in because there's a lot of drops. But this is what it looks like in here. Here at St. Tidville's. You get what I mean why I can't go so far in, but look at that. You don't realise how exciting finding stuff like this is. We're gonna have a look now with the drone. We'll fly it over so you can see any different the drone footage. I've never flown this drone before, so yeah. It's going to be a fun start. Well, I couldn't play the drone. But we have seen it. I need to read it in to play that drone, but we have seen it. Let's head now into town. I'm a bit out of breath. It's going to be my way up. Let's go. by here is where we will be heading later that is the general hospital so I'm gonna have a quick breakfast and then we we'll head back out towards the um, YMCA now I am heading towards Hot Morales which will go to the next leg of our little trip of abandoned Merthyr and that is the synagogue the synagogue sorry the YMCA We've just been the synagogue and on this part of the journey we'll be seeing a lot of big things but it looks like there's some incredible artworks right ahead so we can have a look at that first on the way up there and after that i think we should have a look at the history of the ymca
here it is. This is the FEMA, famous Merthyr YMCA, which YMCA stands for Young Men's Christians Association. It is all boarded up. It is under protective construction walls just because this street had to close at one point because the building was falling apart so much it was a danger but it's a three-story building look at it why is it abandoned and the funny thing with this street now there's a shell of a building but there and further down the road there is a theater so we're going to head down to that shell of a building now and towards the Royal Theatre but look at it something else what you are looking at by here is the memorial to St Tidville and we'll have a little talk about St Tidville until we get to the next bit by here which is an absolute shell of a building St Tidville is the first martyr of Merthyr before the likes of Dick Penderin came about she was a chieftain's daughter who was murdered and ultimately the name Mercer Tidville comes from her. Uh, Mercer, it sounds like a play on words of Martha I've discovered, but that's a memorial. And now we are coming to this building. By you. We'll have a closer look at it now. Almost the frontal shell of this building. It reminds me of the old church in Abervan when I was filming there, but it's just insane that this is still there. It's just kept the front, didn't keep the rest of the building. Being quite unsafe. But yeah, it's crazy. We've got the next location down here, which is the Theatre Royale or Theatre Royal. But we'll go into the history of the Theatre Royal now. Well, behind me now, you can see, is the Theatre Royal. Let's take a look at that. A giant abandoned theatre slash cinema. You can even see he's got the little doors. We'll get closer to it and have a closer look. He's even got his own box office entrance still. It's all still here. Right next to the Richard Sir Sirtrick monument which we'll have a look at that before we go to the next location but look at it it's just an abandoned theatre just right in the middle of Merthyr let's get closer I am right in front of the Richard Chesowitz monument which he created the first ever steam locomotive in 1804 and it was first used at the Dowless Ironworks and if we have a look at it as we will now by here still got the track that was laid on we'll just move around now to have a look at it Richard Severthick 1771 to 1833 pioneer of high pressure steam built the first steam locomotive to run on the rails on February the 21st 1804 it travers traversized the spot in which this monument stands on its way to Abercurrent let's have a look at the hotel this way but you can see there's a danger keep out in this place it's entirely dangerous but we'll have a look by here there's loads of entrances loads of gates to this place in fairness Gate one, a gate two. We got another gate by here, but the big thing is by here the box office. As I want to show you, it looks like the old box office gates, but it does have written up there. If you can see a faintly social club. So this was probably a social club at one point, as my Sherlock Holmes deduction goes. So have a wander on the back and see if we can see another way in or potentially just have a look what it looks like from the back. So yeah, that's the Theatre Royal of Merthyr Tidville. And next up we are going to the General Hospital which is just pretty much at the end of this road. Pot Morales is a bit mental, to say the least. But, while we get there, 
There's a little bit more history I want to tell you about instead. These little graphics are put on screen. So, yeah, let's look into the real history of the General Hospital. Voluntary hospitals were common in cities like London. The Lord of Merthyr, William Thomas Lewis, opened his own voluntary hospital in 1888. It was placed in between the town centre of Merthyr and Dowlas. The hospital subscribed by a subscription basis, funded mainly by coal miners, iron workers and railwaymen. It also used funds fundraisers to survive, mainly using Cavartha Castle as a location. The hospital started to decline as the Prince Charles Hospital in the Gurnos opened. It would become a care home for the elderly, but it would eventually close in 1986 for good. Hello and welcome to the General Hospital. Once in his former glory, but now lacking the statue of William Thomas Lewis, the man who found this off and made it voluntarily a hospital, which actually have fundraisers to keep itself going. So, it's past its former glory. We can try and have a look at it. I don't know if this is a place with the Mercer Rising artwork on the side of it. If it is on a red brick building, I don't know if it's this or the YMCA, but we'll have a look. See if we can see it. It's beautiful artwork. Stonework, sorry. Such a shame. Let's have a look. Entrance point by here. We can see this building is bigger than it looks. Where these the houses are built at the back used to be another ward. But we're gonna look around the other side. With this being a um, voluntary hospital, they used to have fundraisers. And while I try and look for the way in or just have a general look at the building for you guys, this is one of the fundraisers. Caught on camera at Kavartha Park. support of this ever-deserving charity, thousands throng the streets as the carnival passes by on this great fate and gala day. If a lot of you are not familiar with William Thomas Lewis and who he was, he was and a mine owner. He originally started off working for John Christian Stewart, the Marquess of Duke. But the Lord of Merthyr owned many collieries, like the Ron Heritage Park, which is formerly the Lewis Merthyr College in Hammond, the Lady Lewis in Astrid Mack, I think it's called, and most famously, Singen is Universal Colliery. That man was pr practically directly in cause of 400 odd men's death in in a village in my local town which became Britain's worst mining disaster 439 miners died one rescue worker and he played God and got fined up to like 23 pounds which equivalates a couple of p each miner so let's have a look around the side by here now Now we're going to head to one of our final locations. I have added another one. The last one isn't abandoned, but I wanted to add it because you can't have a video about Myrtle without it. You could probably take guesses what it is. But this is another, like, giant of Myrtle history. So now we're going to head to the Iver Steelworks. I'm going to catch a bus and then we'll get there. You have seen it in the Myrtle Rising documentary. We'll have a better look right now. So, join me down the end of the road to the bus stop. So, I'm going past the old Dowler stable, so I'm in 
Dowless now. And he sat in that building as well. Jesus Christ. Full of surprises around here. Um, I've got something else I want to show you after the Ivor Works. Where we're heading now. is another part of Dowless's history I want to show you down here before I get my bus back into the main part of Merthyr. But while we head to the Ivor Works, because it's just straight ahead of there, this is the history of the Dowless Works. The so Ivor Steelworks is the local name for the Dowless Iron Works. One of the most famous works in Welsh history, Dowless was founded by Thomas Lewis and Isaac Wilkinson. The early years of the work saw poor beginnings, but things would change when John Guest became manager. A raise in productivity, Thomas Guest, the son of John Guest, succeeded him as manager and formed the Dowless Iron Company. Things changed when Thomas Guest died in 1807 and his son, Josiah John Guest, took over. His modernization and use of science helped the works reach its peak in 1845 by producing 88,400 tonnes of iron. Josiah passed away in 1852 and the works passed on to his son, Sir Ivor Guest, before he sold the works to Arthur Keane in 1899. After, after contributing in King Edward VIII's abdication crisis, it was eventually taken over by British Steel as it was converted into steel production some years earlier. It would eventually close in 1987. Right, I'm hoping, because when I did the Mirth Horizon documentary, there's a gap fire that takes you right in front. So I'm hoping that gap, and it looks like it's still there. This also looks like it was a part of the ironworks but this is what remains of the Dowless works which started off as an ironworks under the Josiah John Guest and then converted to steel and like of Arthur steel converting was successful and look at this this is one I'm thinking this one part of the ironworks here because this was giant and this has to be not an engine house I'm guessing more of a facility than anything there's no blast furnaces here there's an awful lot of um, foundations we can explore as well you can't go into here because I did see drone, drone footage on YouTube that basically shows that the roof is just collapsing on itself as all wood and in fairness it is an unsafe structure like they said I wouldn't even want to go in it but I do want to show you it because it is incredible but if you look around here now before we go closer to it there should be old tramways and this is this is there by you there's a lot of old tramways by you which they would have transported iron via drams or train by you because you got to remember this ironworks is where the first train was tested in 1804 as we discovered in Penadaran. So let's have an explore. You can see with the foundations in the distance in my ear, there was a a lot more to this place. Even behind was beauty part of the fireworks, fireworks, ironworks in the trees. There's not much dramways left by here. There's another it's a big slab by here. Almost Gives Munners Mayo vibes, which you saw me end the years last year's exploring with Munners Mayo. But something else, we're gonna get closer to the building now, and then we're gonna head down the hill because there's something else I want to show you about here. But it is in incredible. Right, let's like head up closer to this structure. It is another Victorian red brick. Let's see what the finer details of this is. Another, so you can see another bit of um foundation. But let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at another finer detail. See so boarded up. You can see there's a lot of windows. 
a lot of iron beams to give the window frames but it has become a bit of a graffiti thing so it's, I'm gonna flip flip it around here you can see, see Paisley Park is graffitied on here and if you wonder what Paisley Park is it's a rock band based in Merthyr so they tag this and I'm gonna have to ask her if I can use their music because I, I do want to actually include them for this bit. Well, this ironworks by here has played a massive part in King, jo King Edward VIII's abdication. Obviously his brother Bertie took over him after the King's speeches about. But his abdication was pretty much down to him. One of the reasons actually, apart from his Nazi sympathies and marrying an American divorcee, Wallace Simpson, he did a trip to Merthyr and doubtless at the time was closed. And he said about getting the workers back into the workforce, quite aggressively to say the least. So that is, because he's a royal and he was king at the time, that is considered as political interference. So basically, that was one of the reasons that application was a matter. Apart from his divorcee wife and his leanings towards a small angry man with a silly moustache in Germany, King George VIII had to abdicate and we got his brother instead, which, you know, the King's speech came from. So let's have a quick look at this building because it is something else, the nice red bit brick. Not a lot of detail to it, but we'll just go around the building again. I'd say a lot of doorways are closed because this would have been something to see to get inside of. But we move on around to the back entrance because when I did come here for the Mercer Rise and I did have a look in plans of doing an abandoned Mercer video. But you can see it's just it's nothing it's been stripped of everything. Any bit of metal that was left here apart from the window frames, scrapped, has been scrapped. Same around again, so the roof support is just gone in on itself. It is sad to see. It is really sad to see here in Dowless. So, this is the Ivor Works. This was meant to be the last location in this video, but knowing me, um, it goes on, the show goes on, as the saying goes. Because I'm going to head downhill towards the bottom of Dowless because there's something else I want to show you when past on the bus. If we get a bus back into town, jump on another bus to a different part of Merthyr to look at one more location because there's two more to go. And then we'll end the video somewhere. So, down the hill we go. I am now walking towards the Dowless engine house. And look how massive it is. I think this is not a band number, it's a community project. But again, it's a piece of history I can show you. It's insane, so let's have a closer look of it. It also, it, it somewhat reminisces, reminisces Penalta's engine house. The great engine hall there. But this looked like the grand main entrance. It had a pillar that probably stood something. Maybe gargoyles. Because these ironmongers had taste in arts. Imagine walking down these steps into your shifts, which is, could have been part of the Iva works. And these steps are not easy, so I'll see you at the bottom of them. It's got some detail on this. It's so huge. Literally, this stands out. When I was going past on the bus, you can see why I have to come back. Old drainage pipes. It still looks like it's frozen in time. But here we go, let's go to the front, see if it's open, see if it's open. Well, it's very modern in there. I did look in, it's a gymnastics lesson, looks like it's going on there. But they've maintained there, they looked after it, they're modernised inside. Giving it probably more room than they originally had. But it is a marvel of Victorian red brick engineering, which you've seen a lot of in this video. So let's get a bus back into Mercer and head to our final location to end the video with. It's been a good day, I'm not gonna lie, it's been enjoyable.
Let's go find the bus stop. Right, I'm currently, currently walking down Brecon Road. If you know your Mercer history, any clues of where I'm going? It's Brecon Road. But any clues of where I'm going? Keep your eyes peeled, because it should make sense to you all very, very soon. So I am now at the final location for this video. Have you got any guesses what it is? Okay. The luxury of the Iron Masters. Industrial Mike. Sorry. Moss Heritage. But here we are. Akavata Castle. So I'm going to end the video here now, in um, Kavartha Park. That was exploring the abandoned Mirtha. I do want to almost dedicate this video to a man that this video won't be possible for. His research, in fairness, helped this video be made. That is to Alan George. I found out he died in 2014. So this video is dedicated to him and he is credited for research as well even though he was the main source of research so if you did enjoy this video guys please give it a thumbs up give the channel a subscribe share this video comment on it do what you like with it and we'll be back with another exploring video sooner than you think adios